Hey guys, um, this is Brother Dennis, and um, yesterday at church I gave you a challenge to spend some time in God's Word, reading God's Word, and, and, and going through your um, deep dive um, devotional. If you got one of those on the back table, um, you'll have the little devotional sheet, but I, but I challenge you to start in a book like First Peter. And so what I thought I would do is over the next 14 days, which is what I challenge you to start with, or 21 days, um, to start reading God's Word, I thought what I would do is I would spend every morning going through First Peter with you and then going into John. And so I'm going to begin by reading the text. Um, I've read through First Peter, the whole book, which is what I suggested. You do your survey where you read through the whole book. And, and let's just assume you've done that. And now you're going to begin studying the book of First John, or First Peter, excuse me. Um, and so um, let's begin reading. I'm going to begin in verse 3, um, verses 1 through 2. Are, um, his introduction. Well, let's, let's start in verse 1, and then we'll just read through. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those chosen, living as exiles, dispersed abroad in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient and to be sprinkled with the blood of Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. You are being guarded by God's power through faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, even though for now for a short time, if necessary, you suffer grief in various trials, so that the proven character of your faith, more valuable than gold, which, though, imper though perishable, is refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. Though not seeing Him now, you believe in Him, and re you rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy because you're receiving the goal of your faith and the salvation of your souls. And as I read this little um, first, um, this through verse 9, first um, nine verses of First Peter, I actually see um, a couple of key verses that, that you'll want to bring out. One of the things I told you is you want to you want to look for a key verse, you want to read a text, and you can read a paragraph, which is what I just did. You can read a section. This is part of a section that in my Bible is called A Living Hope. Um, or you can read a chapter if you want to. I'm going to read just this first paragraph of verses 3 through 9. I'm going to sort of land there for where um, my, my um, time and God's Word goes. And so I'm, I'm going to put, if you have your little devotional, um, 1 Peter um, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9 is the text that I'm reading. Um, and we're going to begin with prayer of thanksgiving to God for His Word. So let's pray. Gracious Father God, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You um, for Peter and what he says about the living hope that we have. God, help us as we study this Word to have that living hope in You. God, work to, through in, in our hearts and help us to know You and grow in You. In Your name we pray. Amen. And so I've read the text. So now let's do just... Very simple, um, looking at the text and sort of getting out of it. This will be about five minutes. Um, it could be longer, but um, it shouldn't take more than about five minutes to ask these questions. So I'm going to take just that first part. Blessed be the, uh, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of His great mercy, He has given us a new birth and a living into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. You're being guarded by God's power through faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. And I'm going to stop right there. So that's through verse 5. And I'm going to ask some questions of this. And I gave you four questions to ask. Is there an example for me to follow? Is there a sin for me to confess? Is there a truth for me to understand? And is there a comfort for me to experience? And so, um, is there an example to follow? Um, other than Christ's example... Um, his example of sacrifice, which I, I don't really think that is an example for us to follow, just in the, just a, a telling of Jesus' example. So I'm going to skip that one. Is there a sin for me to confess? Not really. There's, I mean, you could you could possibly pull a sin out of this. Um, um, a sin that you could pull out of this is the fact that I'm not um, living in that hope. I'm not um, preaching that gospel to myself effectively. And I need to do that more effectively. I need to live in that hope more faithfully. Um, but is there a truth for me to understand? And, and I think there is. First off, the truth for me to understand 
is that you and I do have an inheritance in Christ. Um, we praise God because of His great mercy, because of who God is, um, because of the fact that He has saved us and, and has given us this, this inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, which is kept in heaven for us. That um, There's a truth in that, that I need to be praising Him, but not only that, that that salvation that's in me is being guarded by God. It says in verse 5, you are being guarded by God's power through faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. So what does that mean? That means this is not a faith that I'm working towards. This is not a faith I receive because I work hard. It is a faith that is a gift from God. And when we see this even in the beginning where it says um, that though to the chosen who are living as exiles dispersed among these cities, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit to be obedient and to be sprinkled with the blood of Jesus Christ. So there's this, this idea that my salvation is a work of God in me, that God um, loved me and sanctified me through the Spirit, and that that continued sanctification is a work of God. So that's truth for me to understand that, that um, God is to be praised, God is blessed, um, and is to be praised because um, He began a work in me that He is continuing in me and that I am kept in, um, I'm kept in grace and in faith by God. It's guarded by God. And that inheritance that I have, that imperishable, unfading, undefiled, is kept in heaven for me not kept in heaven by my works, but kept in heaven for me. And so what's the comfort that I can experience from that? The comfort is that this is not something that I have to do. It's not something that I have to work towards. It's not something that I have to fight for. It's something that God has fought for me through the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. It is something that God has given me, and that should give me joy. I should have so much joy in my life because I have this salvation that comes from God. It's not my works. It's not my ability to be a good person. It is God's grace that God has secured for me by the Holy Spirit, that He is keeping for me, that He is guarding for me by His power, and that one day I will receive through Christ Jesus this living hope that comes through the resurrection of Christ Jesus. I have this living hope that should live in me, and what a great joy that is. And so um, that's the that's our question. So how do I live this out? Uh, what's one step, the question says, what is one positive step that I will do to be obedient to what God is showing me in the passage I've read today? And, and I think it needs to be preaching the gospel to myself, reminding myself when I start to get... Um, you know, the enemy wants me to be working for my salvation. He wants me. He's okay with legalism because there's no victory there. He's okay with me um, beating myself up and self-flagellating every time I do something wrong. He doesn't want me to live in the victory that comes from the knowledge that I've been saved and that God has um, redeemed me and has secured for me a future and a hope and in that victory, that living hope. He doesn't want me to live in that. And so I need to preach that to myself whenever I, when I sin, I need to repent and I need to ask God to forgive me. Why? Because I'm a sinner. But then I need to live in that hope that He has forgiven me, that my repentance has has, has um, been heard by God and accepted by God. And and so I should live that out. So so let's close with our pray it. Um, I want to record our prayer based on the scripture we've read today. Dear God, uh, we just want to come to you today. And God, I want to I want to praise you, God, because of your mighty power, your mercy, your grace, that you have um, saved me and you have secured for me salvation, um, and that that you hold that salvation by your power. It's not by my works. It's not my by by my goodness. It's not by my holiness. It's by your grace, and you call me to holiness as a response to grace not as a way to secure grace. And God, I just thank you for that. I thank you, God, that I, I'm able to, to worship you and, and proclaim you as my Savior who's accomplished a finished work in Christ Jesus. And God, though I am a work in progress, that you are continuing to work in me to make me more like Christ. 
my salvation is not a work in progress. It is secured by you. It was secured by you in eternity past. It is secured by you in eternity present. And it will be secured by you in eternity eternity future. And I have that living hope. What a great joy that is for me today. God, help me to live that out. Help me to preach that to myself. Help me to live that, God. Not live in, in fear and in doubt and in, in, in defeat, but to live in victory because of that living hope. In your name we pray, God. Amen.